Hello and welcome to Planet Hope, a look at the UN's Millennium Development Goals, which aim to help some of the world's poorest countries grow by improving their social conditions and their economies. This week, we're looking at the UN's bid to make sure that everybody has access to essential drugs used to treat illnesses like cancer, malaria and HIV. But there's a battle between the pharmaceutical giants who spend billions of euros developing groundbreaking medicine and then the companies who, after a certain time, can copy the formula and sell it as a generic version for a fraction of the price. Well, a big fight is now being played out in India over a drug to treat leukaemia. But as the country provides the rest of the world with 80% of its low-cost medicine, the decision could have consequences on a global scale. This report now by Marae Dundas and Marina Birch. Drop the kiss, drop the kiss. No drop the kiss. Slogans that have been perfected in recent months. Among the protesters, patients who owe their lives to generic medication. Calling on pharmaceutical giant Novartis to drop its case against the Indian government. The problem really is they're trying to cut off the supply of generic medicines from India so that their monopolies can continue. This is what's known as the medicine market, a very visual reminder of India's status as world leader in low-cost drugs, made locally, sold all over the world. Middle class people use generic and high class people use the branded only. Today the industry is facing one of its greatest challenges. India's Supreme Court is posed to make a decision on a case that could potentially upend the entire generic drug supply chain. Novartis, the Swiss-based drug maker in the eye of the storm. Annual revenue in 2011, 48 billion euros. The company's second best-selling product is a cancer drug known as Gleevec. Its principal compound was discovered nearly 20 years ago, but Novartis says the medicine has been developed and is suing the Indian government for refusing a patent. Without patents, there will be no innovation and in new medicines. It will never bring medicine for our children, for our children's children, for diseases of the future, for any unmet medical needs. So that's the real core of the issue. It's not about Glivec per se. This is how a patent system normally works. A drug company develops a new medicine and is rewarded with a patent which stops other producers from copying the drug for 20 years. The price is fixed without competition. When the patent ends, other generic producers can enter the market. And before long, the price plummets. But herein lies the problem. Large firms like Novartis have been accused of evergreening, making a minor change to an existing drug and asking for a new patent, and with it, a new period of exclusive rights. Evergreening is the nemesis of generic producers. Natco, one of the fastest growing in India, allowed us to film in one of its factories. Different types of anti-cancer drugs are being manufactured and marketed in the domestic market as well as some of the export market. Here they produce exact copies of branded medication with the same standards as those in the West but at a fraction of the cost. Natco is number one for oncology. It also happens to make VNAT, a generic version of Novartis's cancer drug Gleevec. No surprise then that Natco has joined the fight against a patent. Each and every drug does not qualify for a grant of a patent. We'll have to see on so many fronts and so many angles, uh, enhanced efficacy or improved efficacy will not qualify. It should be a new product, new molecule, new innovation, new invention. The affair is being watched closely from this small but influential cancer association in the centre of Mumbai. 78-year-old Vasudha comes here to collect the generic drug VNAT, which keeps her blood cancer under control. Before taking the medicine, I felt weak and like I was going to faint. Because of the treatment, I feel like I've added six years to my life. Sidesh has chronic myeloid leukemia. Good afternoon. How are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. When Here, Sidesh receives the generic drug for free. If he were to buy it, VNAT would cost him the equivalent of 170 euros per month, more than double his pay as an intern. The non-generic Gleevec, by contrast, is 1,700 per month. And did you go to the doctor yesterday? In India, basically, we are poor people. Poor in the sense, we are middle class people. So we cannot offer that much for money for each, uh, every month. So it is really difficult for us to um, buy such kind of uh, medicines. Gleevec is more than 10 times more than the, like, uh, um, VNET. So Gleevec, we cannot afford to buy at all. VNET, we can afford to buy because we have to help these patients, so we are helping them. 
Most of the patients in the waiting room are unaware the very existence of VNAT is threatened. Our visit has led to them being told for the first time. If it costs more than 100,000 rupees, I would understand that my time here is up. <laughs> Next door, a rehabilitation centre has been set up for patients too ill to hold down their previous jobs. Tailoring, printing, candle making, 15,000 people have earned a wage here since 1987. This centre is not for profit and a long way from the business model of the giant pharmaceuticals. I do agree that patenting uh, is, going, is here to stay and that they would need, it. just for survival, they would need to make profits, but it doesn't have to be enormous profits. All of us, in a certain sense, are a little greedy, but certainly business community needs to have a lot of ethics where medical medicine, disease and sick patients are concerned. India's Supreme Court will now have the final say in a case that has been winding through the legal system for six years. Judges will have to interpret India's Patent Act, which only came into effect in 2005. The sticking point is a section known as 3D, which excludes a new patent for minor changes to existing medicines, or in other words, it rules out evergreening. Gleevec has, however, been granted a patent in 40 other countries. Novartis is asking the Indian government to fall in line with the rest of the world. This is not about commercial operation for Novartis. It's about getting clarity on how patents and Section 3D also will be implemented in India. Clarity, basically about getting clarity. Is the patent law much tougher here in India than in other countries? We put the question to the minister in charge of the case. I would not normally comment on a matter which is sub judice, so that part I will not step into speculation. We leave it to the Honourable Supreme Court for adjudication. I would like to say India has and shall always respect the treaties that it has entered into, but do what is correct, what is in public interest. Thank you. Applause from the audience because this battle goes well beyond one drug and one patent. Millions of people in India use generic drugs to survive. The Novartis case could set a precedent which would put other affordable medications at risk. Yet should the Indian government lose, there's still one wild card left to play. It's known as compulsory licensing. Drug maker Bayer discovered the implications firsthand earlier this year in a landmark ruling by the Indian government. The German pharmaceutical will have to allow a generic producer to manufacture its anti-cancer drug Nexava after being deemed unaffordable to most of the nation. Even though sales are limited to India, Bayer has already appealed the decision. The company issued us with this written statement. The order of the patent controller of India damages the international patent system and endangers pharmaceutical research. Once again, it's generic manufacturer Natco on the other side. Its copy of the drug Nexava will sell for 97% less than the branded version. In return, it will pay a 6% royalty on its net sales. And definitely it's going to open a floodgate, but it's all for the good, for the good of the human beings. It is not a win-win uh, in commercial terms, but it is a win-win from humanitarian angle. So I don't think there is any fallacy in calling the compulsory licensing as the future. With one win already on the scoreboard, Natco is applying for other compulsory licences. Around the rest of the world, only a handful have been issued, the large majority for drugs to treat AIDS. Back at the protest, the chanting comes to an end, but the fight continues. Among those demonstrating, Ramesh, a former heroin addict, now HIV positive. Here he takes antiretroviral medication. At this centre, there's only one version, the generic one. When I wasn't taking medication, I had tuberculosis. I was bedridden and could not eat anything. If I had not started antiretroviral therapy, I may not be alive today. Starting the treatment kept me alive. 3,000 patients, former drug addicts from the street, are treated here every year. Their list of diseases is long, HIV, tuberculosis, hepatitis C. 
The worst-case scenario at this centre is a win for Novartis, which could spur an avalanche of other patents to be filed and granted, threatening the supply of generic medication for free. The kind of budgets that we have in Sankal, we wouldn't be able to buy even one-tenth of what we're purchasing right now. It's as simple as that, yeah? More people are going to die, and a few people are going to become very, very rich. The outcome of the Novartis case will have implications well beyond India's borders. 80% of the world's low-cost antiretrovirals are made here, sent mainly to other developing countries in Asia, Africa and South America, reaffirming India's status as the pharmacy of the poor. The Supreme Court's decision has been billed as a game-changing moment for global health. So far in the cases leading up to the final showdown, the Indian legal system has never once ruled in favour of Novartis. Well, that wraps this edition of Planet Hope. Thank you for watching and do stay tuned to France Van Cats.